Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. Today I'm going to be checking out a resin from eSun that they were kind enough to send over. This is the eSun Hard Tough resin. So this is basically an ABS like resin, which is best used if you were printing something that was going to be used for something mechanical, something that needs a higher level of impact resistance and hardness and sturdiness, you know, some heavy duty type stuff. Or in the case of figures, this should be able to protect your figures from shattering if you were to drop them on the ground or if you have some parts of those figures that are kind of thin and brittle and they're really easy to break if you were to print them using an ABS-like resin like the eSun Hard Tough resin. It should provide you with some flexibility to prevent those parts from breaking off so easily. So this is black ABS-like resin and I'll leave links in the description to where you can find it. I'll leave a link to Amazon as well as the official eSun page where you can check it out. The price on this directly from Amazon at the time of this recording is about $58 for this one kilogram bottle. But over on the eSun website, I saw that they were selling it for around $38 and it ships from the United States or the UK or Canada. Um, so you just have to go there and see if they have any in stock and then compare those prices and see which one is going to work out best for you. So before I go over the strength of this resin, I wanted to give you a sense of the amount of detail that you can expect to get out of it. And the model I decided to use for this case is this Lilith bust from Diablo 4, sculpted by Fotis Mint. And of course, if you're interested in this sculpture, I'll leave a link in the description where you can download the file and print it for yourself. And the detail looks pretty good, I do have to say. Now, naturally, because this is a black resin, it's a little bit harder to pick out the details just at first glance because everything is just so dark. You have to get pretty close to it in order to really appreciate it. But this type of resin isn't necessarily meant for showcasing very impressive, highly detailed models. If you look over on eSun's website, they say that this is really more for like an engineering or mechanical uses. So basically functional parts where you're not really too concerned about fine detail. You just want something that's strong and something that works. But since we deal with figures here, figures can also be quite fragile when you print them with resin. So using something like this, this hard tough resin, should be able to keep them from breaking easily. Here's a look at the print settings I use for this model. And this is mostly the same for every other type of resin that I use with the exception of the normal layer time, which I bumped up to 3.8 seconds because that's what eSun recommended and everything printed out just fine. Haven't had any problems, no prints have failed just yet. Now, when it comes to the curing process of this, I did something unprecedented According to them, if you want this to be the strongest as it can possibly be, it has to be cured for around 25 to 30 minutes. And that's exactly what I did. Inside of my cure station, I cured this for a half hour. All right, so now that I followed the parameters for what they say you need to do in order for this to get tough, let's run some tests to see just how tough Lilith can be. So I'm in my garage now and I got a hard concrete floor and I'm gonna do a drop test of poor old Lilith here. Remember, she's been cured for a half an hour and so I'm just gonna hold her above my head. It's gonna be a good six feet or so in the air and I'm just gonna drop her and we'll see if she breaks. Here we go, three, two, one. So if you kind of just ignore the bits of ground debris that's on top of her head, we did get one part that broke off and that is from her left arm. So this part of her arm broke off in that drop, but the horns are still okay. They're a little bit scuffed. Let's do a second drop. Three, two, one. So at first nothing happened, but then on that second bounce, we lost a bit of her horn over here on this side. That is what I was worried about. Apologies for the background noise. There's construction outside the door. All right, so let's do a third and final drop test. Three, two, one. So really kind of the same thing as before. The first drop was fine, but then as she bounced a second time, this other part of the horn fell off, so I guess that area was already compromised. 
All right, so that's the drop test. Now let's do the drill test. We should be able to drill through her without the entire thing just completely shattering and breaking. So let's grab a drill. As I set up for this, I am reminded of the words of the old prophecy that states a drill bit driven through hatred's heart. You know what, just to be on the safe side, let me put on a glove. Let's continue the drilling. All right, so I didn't go all the way through to the other side, but as you can see, that is still a pretty decent size hole as far as the depth is concerned, and the rest of the figure is completely fine. So it did pass the drill test, but what about the hammer test? I'm gonna whack Lilith hard with this hammer and we're gonna see if she breaks. So here we go, take that demon. Some part of her did break off, I'm not too sure what. It's probably this part of this horn here, but let's give it another whack. Let's go for the body. She took some pretty good hits and most of the parts that broke off were from her horns which were um, the structurally weakest points of this model. But as far as the body goes, the body is still intact, she has not shattered and her head is still intact. So yeah, I would say that, that worked out pretty good. But I want to keep hammering stuff so I'm going to do another test with another object. This is a 20 sided die that I printed out. And what I wanna do is I wanna run a test similar to how Esun did on their website where they continuously whacked a print with a hammer and it did not shatter. So what they used was like a, it looked like a dense ball. So I printed out this die and that's what I wanna try. And to make things a little bit more fun and interesting, I am gonna roll this die and whatever number I come up with, that's gonna be the number of times I whack it with the hammer. All right, so let's give this a roll right over here on this counter. So stay tuned, I'm gonna whack this thing eight times with a hammer with some pretty decent strength behind it. I have to brave the heat in this garage because, I mean, let's face it, I can't be whacking this thing with a hammer on my kitchen floor. So. Let's give this a whirl. Remember, eight wax as per the rules of the die. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one. One. Two. Three. That wasn't a clean hit, so let's do that again. Four. Five, six, seven. We're gonna put some stank on this last one, all right? By the power of Thor for number eight. All right, here's the damage that was done to it. A bit scuffed up in some areas, but as you can see, the darn thing did not shatter. It didn't even chip. It just got some scratches on it. But this is a uh, this is pretty tough stuff. Last but not least, I'm going to be doing a drop test with some miniatures because I think that miniatures are very prone to just being knocked over, especially if you do war gaming and you're taking these out and you're doing some competitions, you're transporting them, more likely for you to drop these little guys here. So I'm going to be using this miniature, which is kind of like a, like a larger scale sort of 32 millimeter miniature. I'm also going to be trying out this one right here which is a bit on the stockier, bulkier side. And then for the smallest mini, I'm gonna be using this guy right here. Links in the description if you wanna know where I got these from. Now, special note for this guy 
his axe handle is already broken because I accidentally broke it when I was trying to separate the supports when it was first printed. So even with this ABS like tough resin, you can still break off small thin pieces before they've been cured if you're not careful. All right, so let's do the same thing that we did with the Lilith and let's drop these guys. So for this mini, I'm just gonna drop them at waist level, you know? So if you were just walking around transporting it, you slip and then you drop it on the ground, here's what's going to happen. Ready? Three, two, one. So the rest of the ax broke off when it hit the ground. I think that area was already somewhat compromised, so that's what happened. Let's give it two more drop tests and see if anything else falls. Waist level, three, two, one. Nothing broke off on him. Let's do it again. Three, two, one. Nothing broke off from him again. Um, let's do one more, this time from about six feet or so up in the air. So I'm holding him up. Three, two, one. No damage on this guy besides that ax falling off on the very first drop. His hand is still intact. The little horns on his helmet, they're still there. Legs are still intact. Everything is completely solid with him. Let's move on to the second largest. All right, so we got our good friend, a dwarf with a gun. So let's drop him, waist level, three, two, one. Everything is fine with him. Three, two, one. Everything is fine. We'll do one more and then we'll go above the head. Three, two, one. So far, so good with this guy. The gun is still intact. Arms are still intact. Legs are still intact. He is still intact. I've noticed that you guys might not be able to see him dropping. So let me adjust the camera and then we'll do above the head drop. All right, I hope you can see this because I know that you can hear it. Above the head. All right, like right here. Here we go. Three, two, one, drop. Oh, something fell off there. Let's see what happened. So this time the gun broke off. The gun, well actually his arm, his whole arm right there, most of it was the gun. That part dropped off from that uh, above my head drop. So this miniature is based on Judge Dredd. So he also has a gun sticking out and then he also has this uh, baton that he's holding. I suspect those will drop. All right, from the waist, three, two, one. Everything's good. Three, two, one. Everything's still good. One more. Three, two, one. Everything's still in place. Nothing has broken off of him yet. Now, let's do it from above the head. This is where death happens. Three, two, one. Yep, something broke off there. It's like he's losing, he lost an arm. Let's do it one more time. Three, two, one. See that he lost an arm right there from that drop, but everything else is intact. So from the waist level, which I'd imagine, you know, is if these minis are gonna drop, they're probably gonna drop from that distance and not necessarily six feet in the air for most occasions. And I have had miniatures break even when they just hit carpeted floor when they're not made of this material. So I would definitely say that this is made of sterner stuff and these were cured for half hour. I have to say it was fun testing out this Isan Hard Tough Resin and being able to smash figures with hammers and throw them on the ground intentionally just to see what would happen in the name of science. And I think that this resin has accomplished what it set out to do. From a figure perspective, I have experienced on more than one occasion dropping a figure from a table that sits about this high up onto a carpeted floor and have something break on it. So it's really reassuring knowing that if I printed those same figures in this particular resin, there's a really good chance that when it drops on the carpet, it is not going to break because as you saw, I had to drop some figures more than twice onto concrete in order for something to break on them, but none of them completely shattered. I also think it's important to note that even though this is an ABS-like resin and it is tough, it's not liquid vibranium. So it doesn't mean that whatever you print from it is gonna be impervious to impact damage. Still gonna get some breaks, you can still get chips, but it's gonna be a lot less damage 
image than something that was printed with a non-ABS like resin. At the end of the day, you're paying more money for protection and peace of mind. So you know that if you are going to print something that's going to see a lot of interaction, you're going to be moving it around, you're going to be playing with them, war gaming, showing them off to people, whatever the case may be. Paying that extra money, especially if you plan on painting it and putting time into making it look as good as possible, may be worth it to you to pick up this ABS like resin. So you'll know that in case something happens, most of your figure is going to be fine and you won't have to worry about it shattering into so many pieces that it's just not feasible to put it back together. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you want to see more reviews like resin reviews such as this, then you are definitely going to want to subscribe and stick around because I have another eSun resin review coming up. And that one is based on their PLA Pro resin. So until then, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon.